Hopkinton Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. This is a program uh, about Hopkinton businesses, but more importantly about the people who own, run, and manages, manage those businesses. Uh, today, we've got the opportunity to chat with Mike Scannell, uh, who is the owner and manager of Scannell Services. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I want to start a little bit, uh, sort of going back a bit and, and talk a little bit about your background. I, I, I want to, I'm interested to, to find out how you got to where you're at today. So get, this is not really a job interview, but give us a little background, uh, your education background, the, kind of where you grew up, those kind of things. Uh, originally, I grew up in Waltham, uh, the middle of high school. My family moved to Natick where I ended up graduating high school from. And from that, I went to UMass Amherst and uh, got my college degree there. And uh, came home to live with mom for a short time and <laughs> kept moving further out from Natick to Ashland and eventually bought a home with my wife in Hopkinton. And uh, here I am to stay. What, uh, what's your degree in? What did you get your degree in at UMass? Business. Business. Yes. Did you have an idea at that point that you were gonna, that you wanted to run your own small business or? That was uh, the plan. The, my whole plan was to work for myself. Uh, I really only had one job working for someone else and that was uh, during college. And after I got out of college, I uh, just started started my own business and kept working for myself. Now, was that business always in the general area of construction? Uh, no, I, I had a, another business that I worked in for a, a long period of time that was very seasonal and it kept me busy in the summers. So when the summers ended, I went and did construction with my family where my father was in the construction business as well as my grandfather has always been in the construction uh, business. Ah, so this is something you grew up with. I grew up with it. It was uh, in our blood. Uh, my dad never wanted me to be involved in the construction business. <laughs> He's like, go to college. And uh, so that's what I did. And I just had a knack for it. And uh, I was more on the management end. But now he's uh, not working anymore, so now I'm managing it, uh, working hands-on and uh, taking care of the employees and day-to-day -day operations. But well, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, sort of the challenges in your, in your work, but um, the title of your company includes the word services. How do you define that? Well, recently we changed, um, our name is Scannell Construction. We were into remodeling, additions, and uh, new construction homes for a number of years. And that, uh, that's really changed that nature of the business. And what we did is I was able to um, obtain a contract with the outfit in Marlboro, which is called Greater Marlboro Programs. And what, what that is, that's a um, number of group homes that we take care of where handicapped people live with uh, autistic kids also. Uh, some of them are uh, mentally challenged and some of them are just physically challenged. But um, I bid on taking care of all the properties and part of that was to do the repairs, the construction services there. Uh, we replaced some roofs, for example, on their homes. But also that contract was to take care of the grounds, the landscaping, the snow plowing, and uh, anything else to do with the uh, maintenance of the properties. So. Scandal Services was born from the contract from Marlboro, which forced us to get into the landscaping business, which I had never been in before, yeah. which I uh, never dreamt of it either, but we went out and purchased all new equipment to take care of these uh, homes in Marlboro, and uh, that led me to advertising locally to offer the services. Uh, I didn't want to be known as a landscaper right. because I'm a general contractor in the construction business and we still wanted to do the remodeling and the construction work, but overnight we started a landscape business because I was forced to buy the equipment. So we advertised locally and uh, it really worked out well for us. Tell me a little bit about the contract part with, uh, I, I assume it's with the state. Yes, it's through the state and it's a uh, year to year, it's renewed every April 1st, it was just renewed and what it is is um, these homes need to be kept up to yeah. a certain level, there's a lot of small repairs to our larger repairs such as there was a fire in one of the homes last year which turned into a uh, big project which needed to be fixed right away and um, because I'm licensed, insured, and uh, able to do that type of work, 
they were able to use my services without going outside to hire someone else and uh, worked out really well for me and for them. You know, I think it's interesting that you just said that these contracts are uh, a renewable on a yearly basis. Yes. That's got to that's got to involve a substantial amount of work. Yes. Well, I um, I'm allotted X amount of hours that I have to be there to do the repairs, and then there's a list of things that I need to do. Uh, for example, the snow plowing, the sanding, uh, the mowing of the grass. Uh, cleaning the gutters to pressure washing the houses. Those are all services that are needed yearly and uh, they're all written out to when they need to be done and what exactly needs to be done. Wow, uh, how, many, how many properties? There's five properties. Five? Right. Huh. The demand has got to probably be, it's, it's never ending I would think. It's never ending and uh, right now they're coming up for inspection on all the properties in mid-April. So there's quite a bit of work to be done. Is that on a yearly basis as well, this yes. inspection? Yes. See, that's part of, uh, I think, the work that you do that most people um, may not be aware of. When you enter into a contract like that, you, you not only have to renew it on a yearly basis, which I think is pretty demanding, but you, you do have inspection uh, agencies, I assume, that, uh, that, that come in and do that. I don't think most people are aware of that. No, it's, uh, I, I was not aware of it either. And uh, these, the agencies that come in and do the inspections, they, uh, they're, they're pretty tough what they're, what they're looking for. And uh, I'm actually learning to stay in front of these people, to stay ahead of them before they come in prior to the inspections, knowing what they're going to be looking for, what needs to be repaired, and so forth. You know, good, good for you. Good for you that you, that you, th that you think ahead like that. Because we hear uh, we hear horror stories, and in, uh, in, this is not the case here. You're thinking ahead of this. That that's terrific. Well, I'm, I'm trying to stay ahead. It, it, last year was an excellent learning curve for us, and uh, we saw how the system works, what they're looking for, and uh, we're a month ahead this year. The uh, let, let's talk about the construction business itself. There's uh, it, in in the home area. There's new construction and there's uh, remodeling. Where is your uh, business focused at the moment, and then where would you like it to be? Uh, right now, we're focused on remodeling and uh, home repairs, um, adding on, additions. Uh, new construction right now, I did that with my father for years, but that has uh, really changed. Uh, my dad's retired now, and uh, I'm actually un unable to do the new construction myself because, uh, I mean, it's big investment and uh, I don't believe it's the right time of year, right time of my life to be involved in that right now. Yeah, the, uh, the repair business. The repair business is endless. It's uh, really, really, uh, it's keeping us going right now. Uh, for example, recently uh, we had a tough winter, a lot of ice dams, a lot of leakage, yeah. and that's turned into quite a bit of work for us. Uh, the, the um, we're all aware of the state of the economy. When the economy takes the dip that it does, do people focus more on own, their own home repairs? Does, does your business? Uh, we've definitely seen a, a decrease in uh, inquiries about having work completed, uh, about having projects done at their homes. Uh, a lot less people are uh, not even inquiring about having the projects done because they know they can't afford it. Um, a lot of our estimates that we give for work locally, probably we do the work four or five months down the road. So there's really not a lot of work that somebody calls you up, needs to have something done that gets scheduled right away. It's, uh, it's well in advance. So it's work. fair to say that the economy does have a negative impact it's, and it also pushes people's decisions out further, I would yes, think. Yes, definitely. I've, uh, I've noticed that. But we've uh, opened up to what we uh, offer for services, and that's how Scannell Services was put together. Right. Now, th does it include uh, the Scannell Services include things like uh, snow plowing and? Yes. Well, we we've always offered snow plowing. I've been plowing for over 20 years, and uh, because in the winter there's not a lot of uh, work going on during the snowstorms and that two month period around the holidays, it, it's always been slow, so we offered snow plowing and uh, it's always helped us out get through the winter and it's allowed me to uh, meet people, meet homeowners, businesses, and uh, 
explain to them what I do for work, let them know the services that I can offer them, and that's where we pick up a lot of our work. Is uh, in, in, that, in, in that part of your business, terrible winter, you must have been, been moving and running around uh, was, for extended periods of time. It had to be a pretty tough winter. We, we run about three and a half weeks straight without, stop pl without stopping plowing, moving snow, yeah. uh, making room. Uh, we take care of some condominium complexes for the plowing and the uh, maintenance, and it, uh, we were there for four days straight, pushing snow back, just making it safer for emergency vehicles and for uh, residents to come in and out safely. The um, lot of lot of ice dams. A lot of ice dams. Uh, a lot of damage to residential homes. Um, I don't think a lot of people are fixing the ice dam problems. I think they uh, saw a leak, they let the leak dry up, and they're just forgetting about it. They're kind of hoping it's not going to happen again? Right. Um, Doesn't work that way, does it? No. If you have a leak, I think the leak's there to stay till you fix it properly. Uh, after a winter like this, I, I think the snow and the ice really uh, opened up a lot of leaks and so problems. So there's, there's got to be another part of your business then that involves uh, insurance companies. Insurance companies. Uh, recently, due to all of the ice dams and the insurance work, I contacted my insurance agent uh, directly to find out how I could be involved more with this. And uh, they gave me some uh, ideas and some answers that I was looking for. And I started recently advertising that we can help you with your insurance claim process. We can make it a lot easier. Uh, the insurance companies, I believe, do not offer enough money um, for these damages that are done in the homes. They kind of overlook a lot of the problems. And yeah. the homeowner really isn't, uh, if you don't know the construction business, the homeowner misses that also. But um, I can go in, take a look at the job, see what the estimate was, and almost always there's uh, quite a bit of additional work that's needed. That yeah, I add. would imagine too. It's not until you get inside a wall till you, uh, that you can figure. Once it's opened up, then you can really see the damage. Right. You know, it, it, listening to you, it's it, it's pretty fascinating. You've got to have. Um, business acumen, business, in the sense of managing the business. Now you've got a public entity with which you work, the, the Commonwealth, working on those properties. Then you have the, the insurance part of it. And then there's the employee part. What, th th that's got to be a challenge in itself. I hear people talk all the time about one of the biggest problems is, is hiring and, and, and working with good people. That, that is the uh, most challenging part. A actually, the easiest part is getting the work done. It's the hard part is getting uh, getting more work, keeping everybody busy, managing the day-to-day -day operations, yep. and uh, just keeping the business afloat. Uh, the employees, fortunately, I have a couple of guys that have worked for me for a number of years that I was friends with 25 years ago, and they continue to work with me. So on the employee uh, end, we, uh, we're, we're pretty solid for uh, experienced carpenters and construction type employees. What's, what's, um, what's the hardest part of what you do on a day-to-day on a, on a -day basis? Or the most, maybe not hardest, but the most challenging? Uh, the most challenging is um, just trying to keep the homeowner happy and uh, the workers happy and just keep the cash flow, that's, that's a big part of it, is uh, keeping the money coming in and going out on a timely manner. I, I, uh, gotta, I gotta ask, did you have any, uh, it's almost like you have to be a bit of a, a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist as well, I would think. I mean, you're dealing with, it, it, particularly this winter, you're dealing with people that are, uh, are probably upset because they've got water damage or something, and is that, that's gotta be a big part of your job. That, um, when the snow really started to come down this year, after a week when we had three or four storms and it kept coming in large storms, it was the first time I experienced it in 20 years, how uh, I understood how the homeowners felt. Everyone was uh, complaining, screaming at me, calling constantly, what can I do? And I just I told them, I go, I can't help you. I, I can't climb up on your roof and take the ice dams off. and guarantee that the water's going to stop coming in, or I, I, I can't move the enormous pile of snow blocking your garage without coming back with larger equipment. That's, it was the first time I experienced that. 
Well, that, that forced us to get involved into uh, other areas of work also. Yeah. Right. Like what, like, for example? Uh, for example, we had to go out and buy large commercial snow blowers this year and go around to yeah. a lot of our customers to open up their driveways. Uh, we considered renting a piece of large equipment to do it, but the cost and, and what was involved in that really didn't work out for us to do it that way. So it, things were a lot different this year. Uh, we had some flat roofs from customers that uh, needed them shoveled off. We don't like to go up on roofs and shovel roofs, but we're really forced to help them out. Uh, these are good paying customers and customers who have been with me a long time. They're uh, not only customers but friends. So we were involved in that type of work also this winter. How much of your work is focused, uh, what, what region do you work in? Um, the construction and the uh, services that include the ground maintenance landscaping, I only offer my services in Hockington and Holliston. I don't go outside of those two towns any longer. Interesting. Right. So I do all my advertising locally. Um, I, I live in Hopkinton. My kids go to school here, so we know a fair amount of people yep. through that. And um, why I don't choose to spread out is because the cost of fuel, the time that's wasted, uh, employees driving around, it adds up to quite a bit of uh, wasted money and uh, lost profits for our business to uh, stay successful. I've heard uh People, business people, talk about the fact that they would uh, prefer not to live and work in uh, in the community. Oh, that's a uh, big big fact of my business. Uh, I have to uh, get along with everyone. I have to keep everybody happy, and um, from that, I believe that it forces you to do a really good job, mm. complete everything, and uh, most importantly, keep the customer happy. But that's a big part of our business, working in the community and staying in the community. Um, if we do a job that the customer is not happy, it only takes one big mistake for the whole town to know. And uh, fortunately, that hasn't happened, and we're doing our best to uh, avoid that from happening. Well, that you know, good for you. The uh, the the focus. You talked a little bit about advertising. How do you promote your business uh, locally? Uh, obviously on uh, HCAM TV, yeah. we're doing that. We're advertising in the local paper, other local websites, and I'm on a uh, service called Service Magic, which is a uh, lead generating uh, website, which people go onto Service Magic's website and do an inquiry, inquiry about having their roof done or getting a uh, quote for having some landscape type services and I get the leads sent to me, and uh, I'm only getting the leads for people in Hockington and Holliston. And uh, that gives us quite a bit of uh, contacts. It's no guarantee, but it's a contact, it's a name, right. and these people go onto the internet and uh, do their inquiry while they're at work or they're at home. And uh, with Service Magic, it's a little different because the people that are on there, the contractors, you have to be licensed, insured, they do a background check and they continually check on this monthly to make sure that your company is uh, you know, keeping up to their standard. And I, th I believe that separates me from a lot of other local people. You know, I think you're right. I'm, I'm, um, what I'm impressed with uh, is uh, your, your attention to uh, customer service and your decision you know, to, to, to work in basically two communities. I mean, that, that puts a lot of pressure on, uh, on uh, customer service, doesn't it? Right, it's, uh, it's a big part of our business. And uh, I'm a guy that goes out and talks to all the customers. And if there's a problem, I'm the person to call. Uh, if you call me on my phone, I answer my phone. If I don't, I get right back to you. We, uh, we really try to uh, stay on top of things, and I think that's a big part of my business locally. I think in this community, uh, that's what a lot of the people are looking for, is uh, somebody to answer the phone or to, to get their answer right, right away. Well, I, th I think you're absolutely right. Now, the landscaping side of your business, that's something that you added relatively recently. Last year, right. Uh, I was informed that I was awarded a contract working for the state and part of that contract was to take care of all the landscaping. So I was forced to go out and buy um, a landscaping setup. 
which included uh, brand new commercial mowers, a trailer, blowers, weed whackers, and all of the uh, tools needed to uh, do that type of work. So overnight I had to go out and invest into that, which uh, worked out really well for us. Uh, I didn't plan on becoming a landscaper, but yeah. <laughs> I enjoy working outside, I'm meeting a lot of people. Um, it's, it, it was a great add-on for my business. And uh, including buying all the equipment, I had to um, get a permit to operate my business out of, off my property. Uh, we have a big barn and our property happens to be commercially zoned residential business. So I approached the town of Hawkington to legally operate my business from my property. And I went through the whole process and it took a couple of months and I got approved a permit to uh, operate the uh, landscaping business at my house. That's, uh, that's uh, a couple of months is probably, uh, probably a pretty short time compared to some of the, some of the stories that we hear periodically. Right. Well, we, we uh, <laughs> did it the right way. We got the packet, whatever they wanted to see in the packet for information. We hired out uh, other contractors to do that type of work from us, from engineers to surveyors. And, wow. Yeah. It's a pretty involved process, isn't it? Yeah, it was a, it was a big process. But was, that's also a business uh, that's got to be fairly competitive, I would think. There's more landscapers in Hopkinton than I could ever imagine. And um, ever since I put those mowers on the back of my truck, everybody saw we were landscaping, and uh, we really noticed all the competition that's out there, yeah. especially from other towns coming in. And uh, I never realized how big of a business it, it really is and how uh, competitive it is. So that's one surprise. What, what else is, uh, as, you, as you created the services, the, the additions to your business, what other surprises have, have, uh, have come up? Well, um, the, big, the big surprises was a lot of uh, newer homes in town, 10 to 15 years old, uh, these people aren't remodeling. They're not adding on, mm. and the, the, the big surprise there was uh, there's not a lot of work in town for remodeling. And so I had to change really what I was doing. So instead of going in and redoing a kitchen or a bathroom, we were going in uh, replacing trim on houses, trim around garage doors, um, decks. A lot of people have pressure treated decks when they built the house, beautiful deck 10 or 12 years ago, but now that, that those materials are uh, falling apart, a lot of splinters, they're cracking, and so we've been upgrading a lot of decks. That's been a big uh, you know, materials, part of our business. You know, yeah, that's, that's another good point that you bring up. I, I hadn't, hadn't thought about that. Materials have changed since materials you started. Materials have haven't changed, it? definitely. Yes. And gotten better. They've gotten a lot better. Uh, Maintenance-free products people are interested in. For example, composite decking, um, PVC type railings, composite yeah. railings, no paint involved, uh, no maintenance. They're more expensive, but 15 years down the road, the materials are still as good as the day you purchased them. Maybe a little faded, but you don't have to paint them, scrape them. They're the one initial investment lasts uh, quite a bit of time. Do you, do you have any, uh, any uh, vision for expanding? Uh, beyond the communities that you're working at this point? Or? Um, we're going to spread out to the other local communities, but we'd like to stay in Hopkinton, the Holliston area. We don't want to travel the cost of fuel, uh, time wasted. We're really trying to keep it uh, tight and it, right, to stay profitable and to, to stay in business doing this type of work. Right. Well, Hopkinton, let's talk about Hopkinton a little bit. Right. You've You've made a pretty serious commitment oh, um, to this community and uh, yeah. you know why um, I felt it's a very affluent community uh, Hoppington I believe is trying to separate themselves from other local communities being a, a, a nicer place to live uh, nice the town's trying to push themselves as saying Hoppington is a uh, the town to live in locally which I believe it is compared to other towns uh, around. Uh, growing up in the city, not coming from a town like Hopkinton, when I got the opportunity to move here, I wasn't sure if I wanted to live here forever, but I, I think it's a little bit slower paced here, and it, uh, I enjoy that. It's uh, better for my lifestyle, and I know for my children, it's much better for them also. 
Well, you know, I think it's Boston Magazine is about ready to come out with a new listing of um, communities in Hopkinton's at the top of the list the in terms of in terms of livability. Um, and you have uh, you have children. They're in the schools. Yes. Uh, what else attracted attracted you to? Uh, you, you obviously thought ahead here. You've done a lot of things right, it seems to me. And you you picked a community years ago uh, before it really hit its boom. Uh, so you're doing doing a lot of things right. Well, we we chose Hawkington. Um, we really wanted to live out here because we knew that Hawkington was on the change, was moving forward. Uh, we could get a little bit more land here, obviously. Yep. The houses are spread out a little bit more, and um, the school system was in the upturn, and we knew we were gonna start a family, and uh, this was the type of community we wanted to live in. Uh, we couldn't afford Wellesley or Newton closer to the city, and uh, we tried living in other local communities when we were renting before we bought our first home, and we just didn't feel comfortable there. And uh, yeah. we kept looking at houses in Hopkinton until we uh, found the one that we liked and what fit into our uh, affordability. Well, you, you could right. imagine. I agree yeah. with uh, I agree with all that you just said, and I agree with your decision. So, as we wrap up, give me a quick synopsis of the company, the services, and. Um, and also a little bit of a you know a little bit of a sales pitch, if you will. Well, about Scannell Services, we are uh, working with local business owners and families and homeowners to offer them the services, which is a one stop from the landscape maintenance to the remodeling to small repairs to uh, plumbing leaks. Um, painting, those types of uh, services where instead of uh, hiring four or five different contractors, you can uh, contact us and we can uh, take care of all of those services for you. Mike is just one example of, the, of uh, what are a growing number of quality business people that not only live in this community but also work in this community. And it's a pleasure to have had the opportunity to chat with them. Thanks very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity.